you're on. Okay, so what we have here is we have uh, we have our biodiesel that's been washed. It's been washed three times, and and now you can see how dark it is. It looks looks really good. It looks dry. Uh, so I'm thinking that the water and the soap has has been falling out. So I think it's time now to do a test. A test to see if it's ready to go into the dryer. Uh, the test that I do is really simple. I'm sure there's other tests, but this is a 50/50 shake test. You can you can Google that if you want. Um, basically, we're going to put an equal amount of the biodiesel and distilled water. Put a lid, shake it up, and then set it down. And we're going to see how how long it takes to separate. Uh, if there's minimal soap or no soap in the product, it'll separate out, you know, within five minutes or so. So we're going to try that. Uh, I'm going to get a sample. I'm going to try to measure out an equivalent amount. And you know, it's, it's, it's not exact either, so I'm going to try to put about this much in. Obviously, it doesn't have to be exactly 50-50. We call it the approximately 50-50 test if you want. This is just distilled water that I took out of that water bottle. We know what happens when we mix soap and water. It's an emulsion, and an emulsion will uh, keep water in biodiesel. So you can see what it is right now. You can see it's it's there's a separation. I'm gonna shake it up, and we'll come back in a few, or we'll come back when it is separated, and we'll see how long it took, and we'll see if we can determine if it's ready to go into the dryer. Okay, uh, the, the uh, shake test. This has been six minutes, and actually, there's really it's been a, a great separation. There's really no film, so to speak. Uh, if you let it sit here longer, it would probably be an even cleaner separation. This is a great result, so if, I don't know if you can get in there as close as you can on that. Um, that that's what you want to see, basically. You want to see biodiesel, then water, with no, you know, there's just a slight haze, but it's only been six minutes, so uh, you're going to give your washed biodiesel uh, probably overnight at least uh, to settle so we're good to go. Uh, I'm going to transfer from the washing vessel into the drying vessel and so what I, what I need to do is uh, I need to do we're going we're to bring the product in. I dropped the water level below the level of the standpipe. Now I need to purge the standpipe. So if I go under here see water come out and now biodiesel is coming out. So as soon as I purge that, you can even see there, there's really no soap in there, which is great news. Uh, I'm going to check to see that none of my other valves are on. And I am going to bring, if you look up here, I'm going to open this valve because I'm going to bring, this is my output, I'm going to bring it in here. As soon as I start this process, Jeff, you're going to get up here and I'll show them the inside of this tank mm -hmm. and then at that point it's going to be going into the drying tank so we can show that too. So I'm going to open the valve underneath here that I just purged. Hopefully we can see nice good product going in there. Be an air bubble come out. And if I hit the switch Double checking to make sure everything else is off. All right, so this level will start to drop down, and this level will start to rise. So. You can kind of see what that looks like as the bile is going from the, the wash to the dry.
Oh, I guess I could turn this. I'm just trying not to. Got it. All right. So when we we're bringing the product into the drying vessel, the tea, it's this uh, product is kind of sheeting across the inside of the container, and now I have my small little desk fan that's going to blow air and blow it across the send out and that'll remove the moisture. It'll make it really easy for what little water is left in here to evaporate out. From the results of the 50-50 shake test, I, uh, I will go on record as saying that this, will, this batch will dry very quickly. So that is going to be the process for putting it in. Uh, as you can see, it, it, it's fairly dark right now. Uh, this product will darken as it dries. So hopefully the next time we look at this, we can see the difference in shade of, of color of the bio. You really want to look at the color of this biodiesel to determine if it's drying. If I didn't wash this enough or if I forgot to do this test and it didn't work out for me, and there was a lot of soap in here, that water would stay with the biodiesel and it would remain a lighter color and it wouldn't darken. Uh, again, with the darkening or along with the darkening, you can see it clear up. So, you know, I may let this sit maybe overnight uh, after I do a little bit of drying, I could let it sit, maybe settle out and come back. And if I look in the top of the container and I can see all the way through and I can see the bottom of the tank, it's ready. It's ready to be pumped out. Uh, this will double as my uh, holding tank as long as I don't have another batch ready to come in. If you hear that noise right now, you can see the level of my standpipe. So I, I'm sucking air right now. So basically what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to turn the switch off and I want to close my valve here. That'll keep any more from draining out. Now this is this is also something that I think is is uh, probably pretty important to do is draining your lines. And I do this, and I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, but the more that that biodiesel lays in these lines, the more it's going to you know ooze in and possibly deteriorate them. So I think that when I drain this product, it uh, it helps my lines last a little bit longer, maybe another year or twice as long or something like that. And that's really all I'll do, and I'll go ahead and dump this back into the wash. So this might have been contaminated. And, uh, you know, we're still making this batch as we speak, so... Because I have two pumps here, I can do two things at once. And we have all these vessels and different things going on at the same time. Um, what I, what I could do now with this really quickly is uh, I could decide to go ahead and, and, and put this on a drying cycle. My fan is running. Uh, my output is directed into the, the wash, or the dry rather. So if I simply open this up, it's going to suck out of this container, go into the inlet, into the outlet, and it's going to pump it back out in here. So you can see the product and spread out across, uh, the fan's running, we're out of here, we might as well dry it for a while, so, there we go. Alright, here we go, in the, uh, the middle tank you can see we have our biodiesel that's ready to be washed, on the tank on the left we have our dried biodiesel that is ready uh, to be used, uh, you can tell just from here the color difference in the two and how much darker uh, the biodiesel that's finished is. And when you look into here, um, you can see, you can actually see all the way to the bottom of the tank because it's so clear. And over here, here's our biodiesel. It's still got to be washed. Okay, I want to, the very last thing in the process I, I want to show you guys is uh, removing the finished product uh, from the machine and uh, this is the output hose. Uh, of course, this is the output of pump number two. I have 
an elbow, a couple elbows, and it goes up. And then you could, with the T, move it from either the uh, drying vessel or the washing vessel. Or, if you keep both of those closed, you can open this valve, run it through a filter, and then uh, it'll go to the output. Now, you could, I, I would assume that you could uh, get a hose that would be long enough to put this directly into your vehicle. I don't do that. I put this into jugs and that way I can, because uh, sometimes we'll take it to school, sometimes we'll use it uh, donated or use it on somebody else's farm or at a convention or something else. So I, uh, I typically always put it into the jug. So I'm going to show you how how I do the process. Uh, first thing, you need a source of product. This is the dry, this is all ready to go. I want to make sure that all my other valves are closed. I always like to purge in case there's some debris in here. So that all looks great, you know. So I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to open this and send our product into the inlet side. And then Make sure that my output, my output doesn't have a, a valve on the end of it, but it does have a valve on the beginning, so I just kind of watch. And <clears throat> I have also used uh, a, uh, a container where you couldn't see through, but I found it difficult. I had to look in there, so I found these cubes. I made one really clean, washed it out good, and now I can see when it's about ready to be full, I can cut the process and not overflow. So, first thing I'd want to do is go ahead and Send some product in there. You can see it's nice and clear. Now you can go ahead and kick the pump on and that will force product in there quite a bit faster. Uh, when I do this, again, always check all your valves before you start any of the pumps. So I noticed that if I turned that on, it would send it into the wash. Definitely not what I want to do. But what you can do, and sometimes I'll do this to keep the flow from being really severe is I'll open the recirculate back into the dry and then when I kick the pump on I'm going to send it through this filter and up through the top and that'll that'll push it through at a slower rate. Um, if I wanted to come really fast or I wanted to drain it quick I close that. So I'm going to turn the pump on now and you can see it's coming out substantially more uh, a greater rate and it's also coming back into the into the uh, dry. When it gets almost full I'm going to kill the pump and then I can kill the source here. And that's pretty much now it's done. And then of course, uh, you know, draining these hoses will make them last longer. Since I'm going to continue to uh, maybe put a, another container into a vehicle, I'm just going to hang this hose up full and then I'll drain it when I'm all, all done. So as you can see, this is, this is the color of the product, the finished product here. Um, I've got all kinds of different colors of biodiesel and it really depends on your oil. Uh, this this oil, you know, ha had a color very similar to the finished product. I've had some darker biodiesels come out. Of course, the feedstock was a lot darker. So, the color really, my opinion, has nothing to do with the quality. It's just the color of the feedstock. So you'll find all different colors. And that's that's all we've got.